This is a Miami Dukoff, one of the older mouthpieces made by that company. It's made out of silverite. It's a M5, which is the second most popular baffle type, the M. The Dukoff D baffle is very similar. Um, the only difference is on the M, this area right here has been rounded some instead of a, a, a sharp uh, change from one ramp to the other. To me, they sound pretty much the same. This one has been dropped, as many Dukovs have been throughout their life. The shank is a little out of round. Let's see if we can see that. If I rotate it slowly, you might be able to tell a little bit. It's not as bad as some, but um, in fact, it's usable the way it is, but I'll straighten that out a little bit. But the tip is horrendously bent. I'll show you this a couple different ways, but you should be able to see on the right how, how that rail is higher from this angle. You, know, you can almost see it's... it's you know, as high as the bite plate, whereas the other side is is down. I've taken uh, facing measurements across here, and I've plotted them on my PC. What you see, yeah, let me get some, is from about here on out. By my system, I exaggerate the left and right rail readings so that I can see how twisted it is. This helps me when I'm dialing in the facing work, but this is so bent, this is huge. Usually this is, you know, much less than that, and I'm just fine-tuning. The rest of the facing curve is fairly smooth, some minor bumps and whatever, but the tip is horrendously uh, crooked. It reads, uh, for instance, on the last feeler, uh, the 93 feeler, one and a half on one side and four on the other. See, the 93, I go down the 78, it's crooked like so. It's crooked all the way back to here. Finally at about 37, it's even. So from this point out, this tip has been bent so out. It's, it's pretty bad. So, what I'm going to do is, um, you know, instead of facing that all the way out, you're going to have to take tons of material out of one side. I'm going to try to bend it back in shape a little. Uh, there's a couple tools we can use for that. A uh, pair of pliers. You want to avoid pliers that have any kind of serrated jaws. These are flat. They'll still leave a mark in there, but you, know, you, can, you can do some bending and they, they'll leave a mark there. But first, it's, it's probably better to get a pair of these nylon uh, jawed pliers because they'll leave less of a mark for you to clean up later. Let's see if you can get a good spot. Sometimes it's like slippery, but or tapered. So I'm going to try to bend that back. I just got out a whole bunch of it right there. But, ah, the bite plate just popped out. But fortunately, uh, that'd be easy to put back in there. You can either make another one or or get it back in. So that's one of the casualties uh, <laughs> of that type of work. So, I've already gotten quite a bit of that out. So, I probably went a little too much, and we can open that up a little bit. The other tool that um, I use is you, you get your blacksmith, uh, mini blacksmith anvil here. Um, a hammer that's brass on one side and nylon on the other. Use the nylon side, and we might be able to kind of like shape that back open a little bit. And that's flattening out real nice there. This is something you can do also if uh, that's up to 71. If you um, have to open up a small mouthpiece a lot, you may be able to do some bending. But um, this is a very soft material. Brass will fight you a little more. But still, it kind of wants to hinge across this bottom edge here because the material is so thin there. So just got to be aware of that. That's up to. 
So you get the idea. I'll play around with that a little bit until I uh, get get close to what the uh, client wants. I've got to go double check that. Now the other area, the shank um, area, I discovered a while back, and some other guys have discovered this is you can use something out of your toolbox, socket wrenches. These make a, a nice graduated uh, set of all different sizes. Um, you know, I have a lot, many more sizes uh, than needed for mouthpieces, but you can find a couple there that fit inside your shank real close. This one fits a little loose, but this one here is actually kind of snug. And uh, from that, we can, um, this material is so soft that you can just roll it by hand on the anvil and and get it a lot more uniform. But if you're working on some brass, you may have to, um, you know, give it a little bit of persuasion with the, uh, you know, the soft end of that, of your mallet. So, okay. So, I got a little better. Now the other end here won't, won't go though. So it's not perfect. You sometimes might have to mark high spots with a, a marker or whatever, but you know, there's a high spot right there that I see. So, that's that's the idea. So there's no need to throw these things away. They're they're repairable, and then and then I can get a nice facing on there. Guy uh, client's going to want the works on this one, uh, custom chamber work and my facing work, and now I've got to get the bite plate back on too. So. So where I left it, that was 88, and uh, a little crooked, 79, 85. So there's still a little bit of work to get. The client actually wants a, like a 105 tip, so I'm going to get it maybe. I can feel it move. Down the middle, it's 90, about 93, 92, off to the right, 84, 87, go a little more, 102 down the middle that's a good place to go that leaves me uh, you know after I flatten the table it'll come down a little bit and then you know I can open that up to 105 and and get there from here with taking off some very little of the material compared to where we started and then uh, you know that'll snap back in there uh, you know clean off the old epoxy and get that bite plate back in there